and then you just pile on the damage. So, so not a matchup we've seen very much this season, in spite of traditionally it being thought of, of as a nice counter pick to a mid lane LeBlanc. Point and click CC, and also the ability to go into the self-cast ultimate and be unkillable when it comes. Bit of kill pressure. Lyra wants a gank now onto this Olaf. Kuve slowly pushing forward. There's the twisted advance coming through. There's the Arcane Smash. Kuve running into the river right now, and he will join up with Ambition. Now is Lissandra going to move? The mid lane is fighting as well. Kuve is going to disengage, and somehow Mickey gets the kill onto Crown. No flash or ignite used. Very atypical from a mid laner that's really been leveling up. We're going to see the replay. Yeah, going to come in here with the chains. Yeah, the chains hit. Oh, awkward. yeah, very awkward. The root just long enough to not be able to follow up for the second hit of the E. It was back down bottom lane. Quick play to the Rune King. Ambition here looking around. They want to capitalize on this lack of level six. And there's the ultimate that's going to get chained in. No, the cocoon not quite there. They are going to get the kill. Crown is trapped under the turret. Lyra on the counter gank. Meanwhile, Ixu shows up with the TP. Kuve's TP is down and Ambition is getting boxed in right now. And he is going to land a cocoon onto Ixu, but the follow-up is going to be there. Eventually, Ambition on a suicidal race right now actually dodges out of the knockup, but he will fall to Lyra as he's hunted down deep in enemy territory. And his flash is almost available again. They are going to switch things up, go for the Herald first, something we almost never see a Herald being taken before a dragon. I've seen some teams really start to prioritize the Herald more and more. It does feel like the Herald buff itself just kind of pales in comparison to where it needs to be in terms of if the enemy team yes. has a victor, for example. You get Baron buff and suddenly the victor lays and doesn't clear waves. It's Mickey's in award. I should have known that. There's a TP coming through, though, Ooh. and it is going to be Ixu showing right up, and Ambition gets exploded as Mickey uses his Ignite. Ixu following up on the crowd control with a twisted advance. And Snowflower now here for Crown. There's the combo flashing, and guess what? Ixu will pick up another one for the Freaks. They're going to get a mid turret, too. This is turning into a route. And it's the lift, second. And suddenly, they have no mid lane pressure. Remember, mid lane turrets have been living to 25, 30 minutes in the game. The first turret down in this game is Samsung's mid lane turret. And that is an absolutely horrible sign because this is going to open up the map so much for Africa, and with Mickey being quite fed at this point, he shouldn't have too much trouble roaming. The decisions yet. were not always great with the information that they had, but this time, for the most part, I think they're doing well. They bounce back, take the bottom turret, so now they have that two turret advantage, and they will go ahead and try and use this Rift Herald on Mickey to further their edge and see if they can get some more towers. I'm expecting Mickey to pick it up. Every time a jungler picks up this Take buff. Take enough of an edge so far with this Rift Herald buff. They will grab a dragon, though. So this is the sort of trade that would have made a lot of sense last season, where stacking yeah. dragons had a priority. Still working on it, but it is only about a third HP down. Mickey going to take a lot of damage and some undertow. He's going to come in, force the flash, and Kuve going to fall eventually. Crown looking for an answering kill, but can't find it. Meanwhile, Sanyun and Snowflower do work in the mid lane. No follow on up. The bottom just... side starting to smash at a tier two of his own. So pretty methodical damage. Africa rallies after that turret loss and starts putting pressure on all three lanes. They're gonna get on to Ixu though. Ixu's gonna die. Very, very tanky. Oh, will he die? Fell super low. Finally dies. It felt like Samsung kind of just had a rush of blood. They decided that they could kill me. 36 minutes when that option comes available should Africa get the rest of them. And Snowflower now just gonna start bossing around Stitch. We'll see Wraith thrown at him, and now Africa actually coming in for the commitment. Stitch trying to hop his way out of this one. Lyra's going to find a double knockup on the crowd. They have to ult the Rek'Sai. That's not who you want to ult. And Crown now bounced right back in. The twisted advance. Sangyun comes through for a finisher, and they're going to get three for one. Snowflower falling in the very end, but this should be Africa cracking the base and getting the first in his advantageous situation. I'd be, I'm pretty concerned if that's the only mechanic in can pull off is Lyra. Yeah, Lyra going to come in for a big knockup here, and now Ixu comes around from the flank, but Ambition's going to get a kill onto Lyra. Sangyun has to use his QSS. He's trying to gun down Ambition. Meanwhile, Mickey attempting to clean up on the side here, 
And he's going to fall, so it's only two members left. Four still up for Samsung. Snowflower late on the old pop. Ixu is going to be whittled down eventually. And there's a pulverize to stop the spider. Crown now the next target, but he's not going to fall. And that is an ace here for Samsung. And they have started by Lyra, but yes, uh, Mickey that time didn't wait for the Frozen Tomb to be used. And he just got instantly destroyed, got W'd by Lissandra and then ulted, and that was the end of him. If you're fighting in the enemy jungle with a dual threat comp, you need to be on the same page. Have vision everywhere. They can still play around the dragon, though. Two minutes until a possible number four here from Africa. Holy cow. Rave going to take it, but Mickey again caught out and killed. And they're going to try and TP in with Ixu, but that's not going to work. Kuve, they're on the defense, and Samsung now trying to turn this around. Crown comes in with a W. He will zone his Hourglass Ambition. Caught out on the side, but there is Olaf on top of Lucian. He's going to get the flash, and that's going to be a turnaround here from Kuve to dodge the damage coming in from the culling. Africa trying to get this, but one of their damage threats picked off early. They're going to finish off Snowflower for sure, who splits off from the rest of his team, and that is two for none in favor of Samsung. The inhibitor is open, but it is back up He's now. Samsung have to come and fight on their terms rather than these unorganized jungle fights. So we might see a big team fight here. Well, they're gonna take it, that's number four. Snowflower getting low, but does pop the unbreakable rill. Wraith now targeted in the front line, but here comes Crown. He's gonna ult himself, get a nice ult in the front line. He's gonna be bounced around after that though, and he doesn't fall. Zonia's Hourglass will save him. Kuve still trying to run at Sonyun, but he is protected. No one's dead yet besides this uh, Ixu, but they're starting to turn it around. Samsung now, and Samsung gets a triple kill. A quadra, it's gonna be the first Penta of the season, and it will be for Stitch in his first game on this Callista. They took out the Maokai, but that was... Sandra ultimate, but it wasn't enough. We talked about a two damage comp, a burst damage mage, and Illusion that's being zoned by the Olaf, and that's the reality is that Stitch Put out the consistent damage, and consistent damage is almost completely absent for Afrika. Well, look, Sitch also has a Sterix gauge. This is Season 6, 2016, yep. 80 carry itemization. Brilliant. Now, five seconds until this dragon. Mickey is going to get caught and has to come over the wall. Gets the flash, but the ult hits him anyway. Wraith now on the warpath, and he's just going to ignite him. And that's the end of Mickey, and that's probably the end of Africa's hopes in this game, unless they get some sort of miraculous steal, which I think maybe you go for right now. It might be worth considering 55 seconds on Mickey, which is a very, very long time. With that buff, they can just go. Okay, there is permanent visions, there is potential teleport spots. Baron's gonna go down pretty quick. Yes, it will. They have that rend. Here we go. The turn from Samsung is coming. Is that TP going to be canceled? No, it's not. Wraith just going to get popped right in with the Fates call, and Ixu just melts in that front line. Lyra tries to get into the back stitch here all over Songyun alongside, and there we go. Wraith there to help out, and that's going to be a double kill for Ambition. Wraith takes out Songyun, and that is four for one. Kuve dies, but that's going to be the end of this game as Super Minions pushing up and only the jungler left on the rift for Africa. It evolved into a tale of two tanks. One of them in X2 goes in with his only CC, gets shred by Trundle and dies to Callista. And all the tanks from Samsung's side died Sangyun. He dies in the front line. Lira is going to be the icing on the cake. And it's a win for Samsung. Not quite the icing, did manage to get back no with a flash. This time. On a diet. <laughs> the denial there, but it will be a big comeback win for Samsung. It started out looking grim, but Africa, a different style of play. Still only those two threats from the carry position, but much more AoE and teamfight presence, that's for sure. And our first Cassiopeia of the season will be taken by Crown. Has the level, but hasn't had the luxury of being able to spend a thousand gold on a hex call. Okay, so far he's going to get caught, but Stitch, he's gonna try and flash out, doesn't make it, and goodbye. Lyra helps Songyun pick up that first kill.
flash out of the way of the chain that straight into a dragon, but Ambition now wants to dive Ixu on this top side. Kuve doesn't have the most mana or HP. Cut the wave there, tried to tank it, but they're going to just simply back off, not willing to take that risk. So nice little advantage there from Africa. The story of the set. Crown has been at the top of solo queue as well, so we know he's better mechanically in terms of decision making in the lane than this. Off night for him. Sunflower will get bounced around. Lyra finds Stitch on the backside. Big bullet time, but it's just on the edge, and Samsung going to kite it out. There's the Ixu coming in, though, and Maokai in the choke point with his ultimate. Pops for a little bit more damage. Stitch trying to kite out, doesn't get hit by the Arcane Smash. So one for one the trade when the dust settles. To be fair, he was pretty deftly sidestepping three-man turret dives, so. Almost seems like redundant at this point. Are we going to see a play? There are a lot of members in that brush. Snowflower going to be coming through. Ooh. He's going to flash this and ult, but not going to get the play. Meanwhile, Ambition trying to clean up Mickey. There's a teleport from Samsung. That'll be Kuve showing up for a party that uh, is not going to be happening. And with no Mickey, falling low. It looks like with Ren, they will be able to finish this one off. Kuve buying enough time. Crown is going to get hit by a Maokai W, but the dragon is secure before Mickey can get there. Take the turret, they can kite back and take this dragon. Crucially, Ixu doesn't have teleport, and has obviously shown himself on the top side of the map. Anarchy give up any hopes of contesting this dragon. They have one of their own, so of course, second dragon. Threatening that Baron, they're not actually being very convincing that they could or would do a Baron at the moment, and they're certainly not fa forcing any dangerous face checks, but there's Snowflower, TP going to be coming in from Ixu, and there's the Olaf ulting into the back line immediately. He's trying to get there, and Sangyu gonna open up with the bullet time, but everyone just kites out of it. Kube taking the most damage so far alongside Snowflower, but another inconclusive fight. It's just smart from Santa, they need to back away the moment the ult's channel, but it's down now. It is, and so they're going in for some more poke damage as they try and get in front of the minion wave and preserve their mid lane turret. Here we go, Ambition gets the knock up onto Ixu. Snowflower doesn't have the ult, it's Crown now gonna come and chase him down. Lyra, the next target, two kills for Crown and one for Stitch, and that should be a Baron. Samsung bought enough time, never overcommitted, didn't use their all-important teamfight ultimate, and then pulled the trigger, and this should be Baron as a result. Every time we see that bullet time down, it actually is living up to its name because Samsung just dodges straight through it, and it hasn't been able to be used effectively here. They wait for the... And she has the most offensive of the Elixir choices, so he's looking to do damage himself, rush down Samyun, stop the channel if she's forced to cancel the channel to get away from Olaf. Mission success from the Olaf player's perspective. For Samsung, Ixu was also using his TP there, so it's not as bad as it could have been. And they're going to turn onto the Dragon instead after it spawned, but that will delay this game and may cost them quite a few wards around that Baron, but it's not being swept very aggressively right now by Africa outside of his Q in a Cinder Hulk. Meanwhile, Kube is nowhere to be found, and this is a rush of the Baron by Africa. Their top laner is not there. There's the Rek'Sai ult. Africa wants to fight this gravity field down. Ambition going to find his way in the pit, get a knockup, and then get right out. Meanwhile, Crown going to try and make this work. Sangyun in the back line has to flash and cancel his bullet time. Mickey is going to kill Wraith, though, to start off this fight. Crown still trying to get some damage down on the back. He's going to get Ixu, but that is going to be it. And Crown will be targeted himself, has to use the Zonia's Hourglass, and he will fall four for one. Kuve just not there and not in position, so Africa buys themselves just a little bit more time. Afrika could kite back and we finally saw bullet time and a six item. Victor standing in the bullet time getting free damage because no one could close him down. And this is a major problem now that the Baron is actually going to be taken by Africa while we're still waiting for the members of Samsung to spawn. This is where the lack of wave clear from Samsung He's is fighting in a fairly narrow corridor, very rumble-esque in that way. Putting on pressure, they cannot give up a fifth drag. Uh, Crown has to use the, uh oh, he gets knocked down after using his cleanse early. He's gonna have to deal with this situation and Mickey's gonna get the first kill of the fight. Stitch all alone trying to hop his way to victory, but it's just not gonna be, oh, does survive with the Sterix gauge actually. And he's trying to just get out of the backside of the enemy jungle, but he gets hit for a fat crit. 
you from can... Song Yoon. This is the reality of Cassiopeia. It's so hard to position because two tanks diving her. She doesn't have the damage to take down this Maokai with Spirit Visage, with all the health stacking, even a second Spectre's Cow. Needs to be staying alive next to a Cassiopeia. That's what I want to see in the next fight for Samson. All right, Africa wants to go for this Baron again. Kuve not positioned particularly well, and this Baron may just die before anyone has a chance to get there. They get the ward in, but it's going to be too late. The fight has started, but the Baron is done. Snowflower nearly dead. Ixu taking a bunch of damage on the front line. Crown exhausted, trying to kite out the back of this fight. Bullet time going to do nothing, and Wraith comes in with an interrupt. Can Crown clean up this fight? Stitch is there. He's still alive. Two members of Africa now down, Mickey Lowe. They're going to be on the run. Double kill for Kuve. But man, Wraith managed to sneak in there and interrupt the bullet time with a flay of all things. Didn't even have to flash. And in general, that was just because Africa was splitting their call. Kuve's getting cute though. Yeah, he is. He's not going to fall. Has to back off Stitch in the meantime. On a mission here in the mid lane, Kuve is just there to deny these recalls. And even with a Baron empowered recall, they can't quite do it. Crown will fall, but so will Song Yoon. And Ambition is back. And Mickey is in his sights. He's trying to run. There's the gravity field. Boom, dunked with the true damage. And that's going to be it. Samsung, in the end, will get the ace around the Baron. And fortunately for Africa, they split up. They had a split call finishing the Baron while fighting at the same time. And that bought Samsung just enough of a window to take the fight and to take the 2-0 win. This game seesawed on two split calls. One of them was a team fight where Cassiopeia and Olaf fought on one side and Afrika cleaned it up and closed the gap. In the second time, they stayed on Baron with three. Two tanks dived the back line, but it was 2v5. Mixing it up a little bit. They played Corky and MF in that game. Now their second AD carry in the jungle in the form of Kindred. How can you not be hyped? Scout and Blank in the game. Five AD carries over two teams. A Lulu to speed some of them up. Tom Kench potentially to be a buzz kill. Kindred, obviously different types of junglers. But if you're always there in mid, more time than not, you will be able to either chunk out the enemy mid or get something going. And this time, Blank was nowhere to be seen. Uh, sorry, this time, Wings was nowhere to be seen around. Him. Nope but Blank will be seen directly in front of the dragon, killing it, as Bang and Wolf have done an exceptional job. Extra resists, and uh, no match but for these two tanky damage dealers is the I, Rift Herald. I love it. Giving the Rift Herald to Trace for more excellent pushing power He's early in trouble this game. with minion control, so. <laughs> A wise idea. And Graves rotate around. Oh, he got Wolf is actually stuck Whoa. in the wall right there. He can't escape. Has to pop his <laughs> ultimate. Trace is just going to <laughs> go into the fight with a teleport. Nearly kill Blank. Blank will get finished up after getting kicked out of Lamb's respite. Now Wolf trying to escape on the side. Duke doing damage, but he is nearly dead himself. A Trundle Pillar actually not enough to zone out Wolf right there. So they get one kill, but can't get any more. Dragon is alive, so Jin Air will just transfer to that objective instead. Wolf was literally stunned for six seconds while the Trundle Pillow was live. Yeah, that was definitely a bug and definitely not good. Oh, Lamb's respite can even be channeled. Well, back to the dragon for number two from Jin Air. They quite easily carve it up with all the damage that they've got. They do enough not to get them winged on the other hand. He gets found out by Scout, has to hop over to the ward. He's gonna need to flash over into the river brush. So he's escaping for the moment. Scout with a flash. Really? Finishes it off the kill. It might not be an assassin, but that was the sort of decisive move we expected from Scout, given his reputation in the solo queue ranking. Looking for some poke. Start this one off. Duke going to not be injured at all. Thornmail has been completed. Well, a package actually used on the retreat. Wolf takes a huge amount of damage and nearly dies immediately. Has to get wild growth. Jinesh should re-engage now. They can do whatever they want. Wild growth down. Wolf basically a sitting duck. Well, he still has his ultimate, and he is back at 50% HP. So all is not lost. But the poke coming in is still massive. And that's dragon number three. But we're still looking at at the earliest. Now, this is what I want to know about. Talk to me about Trace versus Duke. As far as I can tell, Duke literally laughs at his I damage. Mean, they chucked out the jungler, in. so they're going to TP in immediately. They're going to be able to burn this Tiberian down very quickly. But they're squishy. They are very squishy, but there is no jungler to secure this objective, and that's going to be winged, taking it with the smite. Kindred not here yet, 
And they are going to have to back out. Wolf getting quite low and on the run, and he's going to fall. Pilot gets the second kill of the game. Very unfortunately that we had more kills. I have to say Duke uses his flash just to get over the pillar. And now they're going to try and follow this one up, but there is just almost <laughs> no way they kill Duke. <laughs> So they have to kill everyone else instead. They find Scout, and Trace will finish him with the help of bullet time. Duke will uh, teleport with a flourish. Specifically bound up minion layers. The one thing I regret about this game, Papa Smithy, is there is no banner of command on Jin That's Air. what I'm saying. Who's going to build it, though? <laughs> Trundle has no AP scaling. Corky, please. <laughs> he doesn't get any more flashes, though. But they are winning the slow summoner spell war. And now SKT going to go for a Baron. They Trace, have a fast Baron. They, yep, they do, and they're going to try and take this one out. Baron now 4,000 HP. Bang is low, though. We're going to come into the oh. pit, but Kendra gets it. Bullet time over the Baron pit, but it's just not enough. Jay is already ulted, and they're going to try and poke this, make it rain. They going to take it. A lot of damage, and Jin Air still moving forward, but SK Telecom successfully gets the Baron and gets out so far with all five members broken apart by a Trundle Pillar. And Jin Air, they still want this, but they're getting poked. Bang back at full HP right now, having life stolen. He's gonna dodge and deal a lot of damage to Kuzan's Corky. Now they're gonna look for the re-engage, Culling. Coming through, going to hit Che, but he has a frozen heart, not that much damage. Abyssal Voyage through. They try and tie up Pilot, but no one can actually fight in this game. Bang once again, charging forward. And there he goes, he gets Kuzan finally. Bang, an absolute hero this game as they try to close out or just do something with this Baron buff. Bang finally at long last gets a kill. He forced the flash like four minutes Looks ago. Like he's out of Q range, Bang. Taking a few autos over the top. They're gonna go for it with a steal with bullet time. No, Kindred Blank finds the smite. Meanwhile, TP in from Trace. Gonna go ahead and knock Duke out of the competition. He throws so, down a pillar and tries uh, to, but SKT is, back up. This could be the very crucial moment in this game. Che has to get out of base. He doesn't even have time to heal right now. That's how desperate Jenner is. Jenner going to be walking in blind to this Baron. That's been started. They have to go. It's at 4,000 HP. And here we go. There's the bullet time over the side. Blank nearly dead. Does pop the Kindred ult, but they're trapped in the pit. Che now in the back. Duke nearly gone. Kuzan in the pit himself. Pilot taking a huge amount Duke's of damage. Dead. But they get him. They kill Duke finally. It's a double kill now. And three members dead. Bang on the run. Kuzan is just going to destroy him. Triple kill Jin for win. Pilot. And that's the ace. Jin Air is just going to move into the enemy base in a 50 minute game with only 10 kills. And Jin Air successfully run this wacky AD carry push comp for a win. It is insane that they picked up the victory, but in tunneling in, so many members fell so low to the bullet time. Blank tried to dash out the back. Lee Sin was there for the flank. Jin Air, they pulled a rabbit out of the hat. Okay, it's against Scout and it's against Blank. But Jin Air win. They do. They're going to take the first game of the season here. Their first victory. Can they close out the series as they kill the Nexus? That was a fun one. Jin Air coming in with a plan and managing to execute it. Paying nearly turning that game around, though. That's the great thing about best of three is that now SKT can go to back to the drawing board. They can start the bands up. They can ensure this doesn't happen again. Not really the prototypical person to bring along with the Tom Kench. I guess maybe Evelyn is the closest thing there, but certainly not the Quinn. Now you turn her into an eagle, and then you come out and just AOE people in the back line. She right? ults. I mean, Faker doesn't even have to dodge it. Can just immediately clear the CC with the oranges and continue on his merry way. BK? That's right, he will be K. So Bengi actually getting collapsed on here in his own jungle. Will be found by Winged and Trace got a oh. flash over it. That's the huge damage of Graves these days if you hit both sides of that Q. Nice job from and Winged. Blue buff <laughs> at four minutes. <laughs> Very They're true. not done. And Faker the next target here. They're going to try and dive this exhaust now down onto wing. Faker trying to get out, and he's not going to live. Kuzan gets the wow. ignite and barely, barely, barely lives through that. Faker used his exhaust, but not his flash. Meanwhile, Jinair. Last game, so you calm down there. All right. All right, so Trace 
Going to be trading with Duke once again. Winged is here, and Kakunga has stopped Duke for the time being, and Duke is the next to fall. Winged finishing up the kill, and Trace kiting, and Wing now on a big roll through the jungle. Wing now thinking about possibility of a dive. They know exactly where Bengi is. If Duke at any point is stunned against a wall, he will be burst instantly. Here we go. So you're gonna try and push him forward. Duke now trying to get out. Does the miss the cocoon? Janair, <laughs> so much damage from Trace. Just explodes him. Yeah, and there's the Fakers. Gangplank ult coming in. Bengi here. Winged is here, though. He's going to stop up Bengi, at least for the moment, and try and run interference. Challenging Smite down once again. There's Faker coming through with his exhaust. Oh! But Che is here, and he is huge. Faker now on the run, and he is just not going to, well, barely make it out inside Wolf, but gets chased down by Winged. Wolf now the next target. Where's Chase pulverized? There it is. Kuzan now wants another one. Jinnah a routing SKT. Yeah, seven to zero now in favor of Jinnah as they are going to push through this mid lane. Well, again, there is an asterisk back to this. They, they uh, didn't expect it in game one and they did play two of their subs, so they'll have a bitter pill to swallow if they're going to lose game number two with their starting lineup. Dragon number one at 13 minutes to Jin Air. Bengi actually avoided that Q damage. And they don't know Elise up. is here. They don't know Elise is here, and Elise is very strong. She's 4 0 and 3. Duke gets opened up on by the collateral damage. They find <laughs> Bengi <laughs> accidentally, it looked like. And now Duke. I am sorry, Duke. Trace is massive, and Boom. he is here to shotgun you into the ground. And Trace now. He's moving forward. Take Duke. the Elise. Where does Benki go? This Evelyn. And Evelyn has just been a total non-factor. I mean, Evelyn face checks Graves. And Evelyn, you saw. Well, exactly. She's, she also built the... She didn't... She built AP. In this snowball game. sense. Why not? Yeah. Why not, indeed. Add a little bit more crowd control for yourself. Kuzan now going to get ulted. Will he be the first death of the game? Janair, he is going to get killed. That is a shutdown for Faker, but Faker the fall as well. Wing now trying to get out of there as everyone seemingly in that mid lane. There's the true shot barrage hitting over the top. Trace now exhausted the second one, and that's another big shutdown on the wing by Duke. So an important comeback, but they are still more than 5,000 gold. Behind. Red buff. Uh, didn't see if Trace actually got it or not. Now they're gonna try and collapse onto Duke. Bengi's gonna get oh, Bengi's oh. just gonna get shot. Bengi, you can't do that. Trace is huge. Disrespect on the lane. They're going to definitely lose this dragon now. The drop in vision. You can see the rise of Elise. Uh, uh, Evelyn's not exactly Rek'Sai, but at this point, Bengi's basically a moving wall. Yes. Especially with how fast Trace is able. It's a great change. It's, it's hopefully Herald's. A new era for this new Janelle Here we lineup. go, and they're going to use the TP immediately. Duke has his TP as well, but there's no vision, and they can do this Baron so quickly. 3,000 health. Zubia, but they're getting very low themselves from trying to take it. Jin is going to try and disengage, but there's a bullet time. Not going to get a kill. Che is going to have to sacrifice himself. Tries to flash out. Baron's but the low. Baron's still low. Are they going to get it? SK Telecom has a chance to turn this game around. No! Winged comes in with the smite to pick up the Baron. Jin Air get it anyway, but can they escape with their lives? That's two down for Jin Air. Duke still trying to pursue this smoke screen, trying to just disengage right now as best they can. Wolf going to come in with an Abyssal Voyage. Duke gets the ult to finish off the kill on to Che. Jin Air escape with two. They killed Bengi. Jin Air wants to take number three and maybe take this into a five scaling game. Whoops. Ooh, that wasn't good. Wasn't Wei Zhao here on the cross map pushing of the ult, which means that Duke's going to get at minimum, a lot of damage. Trace is racing there, though. Yeah, Trace is coming in. Does have that home guard at this. Hasn't been spotted. Stage of the game. Duke is going to get 1v1, <laughs> and that damage is enormous. Flash, Steric Gage, pop for Duke, and this is not a very exciting duel. Oh, he misses, actually. Nope. It doesn't matter in the end. The 1v1, too much. As Trace has to use his flash, but no this flash. Week, but this Evelyn not doing him any favors, and. Perhaps SK Telecom taking their opponents a bit too lightly coming in tonight. And Pilot actually, huge chunk courtesy of Faker. Pilot actually has to cast his heal just to get out of that situation. Here comes Trace. And there's Faker getting bounced around, and he just falls. Bullet time 
There's going to be a little bit of tickling here as Kuzan comes over the wall. They want to get Bang right now, but Wing going to flash forward. They cocoon Wolf in They're the losing end. Turrets, though, and same Wolf time. is going to fall too. Now they do lose a turret. Wolf. Well, you is. wouldn't even expect Bengi to play a champion like Kindred anyway. He's just not that I kind of player. I completely agree with you. So you need to yeah. find a backup control jungler. Where's the Infinite Lisa? here? And the Mirror Mana can just stay toggled. And there we go. Another GP ult coming through, but it just doesn't do anything. Wing clears out the barrel, and that'll be a little bit wide on the True Shot Barrage. They have to be careful. Wing falling relatively low. More zoning coming in. Chain decides now is the time. Duke is punched forward. Duke falls to pilot, and now they take that final inhibitor. So the zones were down, and that meant it was time to push the go button for Jin Air. Che is probably not going to pick up an MVP if they win this series, but what a series he has had. Yeah, Che has been on fire Hit tonight. The jackpot tonight, and whether that was his skill or entirely accidental, we'll have to wait and see. Well, Baron's dead. Yeah, goodbye, Baron. So Baron taken. That will bridge them nicely into a fifth dragon that is three minutes it's away. It's not realistic. They've got full information now. They're trying it, though. Well, I think you have to go for this, but it's just going to fall so damn fast. And before they even get there... They give up. Yeah, that's going to be the final dragon for Jin Air. They're at number five. They lose another Nexus oh. turret in the interim. Naked Nexus. Goes down to about a third HP immediately. Inhibitor back up. They're going to take this one down first, as methodical as can be. They want this 2-0 over SK Telecom. Naked Inhibitor. They just have to clear out these minion waves. Wait, dueling up poke damage. Jay going to go in, though. Duke on the side. Trace is there. He is blinded. Duke going to make it out with the help of Hysteric Gauge. But Wolf falls, and that's going to be it. They Jin take down the Nexus. Win. And Jin Air with the 2-0. What an unlikely situation coming in tonight. Jin Air comes up with a huge win. It continues and ends a week of 2-0 wins, but who would have penciled in Jin Air Green Wings 2-0 sweeping SK Telecom? Yeah, massive upset.